<clears throat> Alright, so for the second problem, uh, what we're going to look at is, well, I guess we'll, let's call it a tennis ball attached to a string that's uh, attached to the ceiling here. And the tennis ball is going to be moving in a horizontal circle. So we've kind of uh, drawn out the trajectory of the tennis ball here. And what we're going to do, um, what's given here, the length of this string is given, and also the angle that that string makes with the vertical. And we want to find the, the speed that the tennis ball moves at. Now we can kind of imagine that there's only one speed that's going to go with each angle because, well, if it's not moving very fast, we would imagine it to be a pretty, a pretty shallow angle here. It's going to kind of droop down a bit. If it was moving quite fast, then we can imagine that, that the tennis ball, the, the string would kind of lift up and we have a larger angle here. <clears throat> All right, well, uh, I see some circular motion going on. It means that we'll probably have to deal with this centripetal acceleration again. And if we're working with centripetal acceleration, we probably need to also deal with forces. So let's get right into our forces strategy. And uh, what forces do we have acting on the tennis ball? That's the object we're going to be studying here. We'll, of course, have our force of gravity. And what else do we have here? We also have, oh, well, there's a string attached, so there's going to be a tension force. We know that the tension force pulls parallel or along that uh, string that's attached. So it's going to look something like this. And uh, there, actually, there's, there's no other forces. This, there's, there's no friction involved. It's not sliding on anything like that. And there's nothing pushing the tennis ball, so there's no normal force. So this is it. And uh, actually, we're going to choose our coordinate system here. And when we choose our coordinate system, it is going to be a little help for, helpful for us to think about uh, this object's accelerating, acceleration here. Now, as it moves in this horizontal circle, again, at this instant, we know what direction the object is accelerating. The direction of its acceleration at this instant is to the right or towards the center of the circle. Now, based on that choice, that's going to, I think, what I'm going to want to do here is to use our standard uh, x, y coordinate axis. All right, so those are our x and y directions. Uh, and so, actually, looking ahead, I can see that my force of gravity, that's going to be directly in my negative y direction, so that'll be relatively easy to work with. My tension force has both x and y components, and so let's go in there right now and uh, draw our right triangle that's going to help us with those x and y components. And so I'm going to, I'm going to want to draw in a y component for the, we're going to make a triangle here, and I want my y component to be parallel with the y-axis, and I want my x component to be parallel with the x-axis. My tension force arrow is the hypotenuse. Now one other thing, and I'll just put this real quick here, uh, we know from geometry class that if I have some parallel lines here, that whatever angle is here is going to be the same angle that's here. So we can apply that, oh, if this is angle theta, then I will also find angle theta right in here. All right, so at this point, uh, we've got our four arrows, we've got our coordinate system, we're all, we're all set to uh, use Newton's second law in both the x and y directions. And so let's start off, uh, let's start off with the x direction uh, this time. And so what are we going to have here? And in the x direction, well, there's, the force of gravity has no x component because it's directly in our negative y direction. Our tension force does have an x component, and we should be able to convince ourselves at this point that it's in a positive direction. Our tension force uh, vector, tension force arrow, is closer to the positive x-axis in direction than it is to the negative x-axis. So it is positive. And I am going to have to multiply it by either a sine or a cosine. And my x component is this piece right here, which is opposite from my angle. And I know the opposite uh, is proportional to the sine. So that's going to be the time to the sine of it. And so that's it. We've looked at all of our forces, and we've found their x components and added them up. And now we're ready for this side. Now, the mass isn't given. Uh, and so, well, after a brief moment of panic here, we just write in M, and then we need to think about our a sub x. And again, whenever we have this circular motion, we're going to have to have this uh, information ready. And that is that, look at my x-axis. It is directly lined up with the direction it's accelerating, it's accelerating, and we know the amount of acceleration 
uh, is V squared over R. All right, where V is the speed, actually that's what we're looking for, and R is the radius of the circular trajectory. Now we can't do too much more. Actually, I guess we, we can do one, let's do one more step here. And that is, yeah, the radius of the circular, circular trajectory, it's not given in the problem directly, but we can find it by creating an additional right triangle right here. We want this distance. That's the radius of our circular trajectory. And we should be able to see that this is equal to the length of the string times the sine of theta. So I guess we can plug that in here. L sine theta is the radius. Uh, so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and try our uh, Newton's second law in the y direction here. And let's see what we get here. Uh, let's start with the force of gravity because that's pretty easy for us. That's directly in our negative y direction. And so I'm going to have negative, and the force of gravity again has magnitude mg. My, uh, the y component of the tension force, that is going to be positive. The tension force uh, is pointing upwards. And so that's we're going to have positive, the tension force. And now we want this part of our right triangle. And that is adjacent to our angle theta. And so I need to put in the cosine here, multiplied by the cosine. Now over on this side, um, just like we had some special information about a sub x here, we need to know something about a sub y. And we've seen this in a few problems now that as this thing moves along a horizontal circle, there's absolutely no motion up or down in our y direction. There's no motion at all in the y direction, and so this is going to be zero. And so uh, at this point, actually, I think what we're going to want to do here is to solve for this tension force, and then we can plug it in right here. There's a little bit of algebra involved, but I think we're on our way here. Um, so I'm going to skip a step or two here, maybe. Let's see, I'm going to get tension force is this. And now I'm going to plug that in right over here. So let's see what we get. And we've seen this uh, in a number of problems at this point that well, it's not always, uh, the mass doesn't always cancel out, but in a lot of problems it does. We can divide both sides by m. Uh, and at this point, we can solve for, for b. And let's see here. I'm going to, well, I'm going to get, well, let's go, skip, a, skip, a, skip a couple steps, uh, but you can work through these steps. So I'm going to get b here, and that's going to be, let's see, the square root of g l. And then I'll have sine theta times the tangent of theta all inside of this square root. So you can double check those algebra steps. Um, but at this, let's see here, we know the value of g, of course, we'll use 10 in our exams. The length was given, and the angle here was given.